this is Miss Finn from the Literacy Lab. Today I will be reading How the Dinosaur Got to the Museum by Jesse Hartland. Millions and millions of years ago, dinosaurs had the run of the earth. They romped in the sun, ate what they pleased, and were bothered by no one but one another. More than 145 million years have passed since this dinosaur died. Over time, our planet went through colossal changes. Icy glaciers formed, then melted. Forests rose up and died. Volcanoes erupted. Storms raged, causing this dinosaur's bones to be hidden for a long, long, long time. So how did the dinosaur actually get to the museum? The mighty Diplodocus, an herbivore, a plant eater, with pencil-like teeth grazes on the plain. The rain comes, dripping, drenching, pouring, and turns into a torrential flood, sweeping the big dinosaur off its feet down the river to its death. As years turn into decades and decades into centuries, sand and silt blow over the dinosaur's bones, burying them deeper and deeper and deeper. Sea levels rise and fall, the earth cracks, and powerful sandstorms swirl over the old riverbeds. Millions more years go by, mountains uplift, tilting the dinosaur beds, water and wind erode the rocks. 145 million years have passed after the river flooded and buried the Diplodocus and the ancient riverbed is finally exposed. Here, Rooting around the old riverbed in 1923 is the dinosaur hunter. He has studied geology, pored over maps and books, and knows roughly where to look for dinosaur fossils. After searching and digging for months and months, he finds an unusually large bone in what we today call Utah. He suspects that what he has found may be a leg bone from a Diplodocus longness. Here is the paleontologist, an expert in prehistoric fossils who travels from the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C. to the plains of Utah to view the bone. He confirms that yes, it is indeed a dinosaur bone, late Jurassic period, most likely a tibia from the leg of the Diplodocus, which was discovered by the dinosaur hunter. Here is the team of excavators from the Smithsonian who remove the tons of stone surrounding the specimen. They work in the hot sun for over one year, searching for, digging up, and numbering more and more bones from the Diplodocus, which was confirmed by the paleontologist and spotted by the dinosaur hunter. Here are the movers who carefully pack the wagons, hauled to the train and delivered to the museum the multiple boxes of the 145 million year old bones of the Diplodocus, which was dug up by the excavators, identified by the paleontologist, and found by the observant dinosaur hunter. Here are the preparators in the old Department of Geology at the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C to unpack all 34 boxes and dust off and shellac each bone until they discover, oh no, the head and neck are missing. As quick as can be, the curator makes numerous phone calls, sends multiple letters and several dozen telegrams marked super urgent to other museums. He tracks down a replacement plaster cast of the missing head and neck for the Diplodocus, which was, located at the Carnegie Museum in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and shipped as quickly as possible to the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C. The crates arrive at last, and assembly is resumed on the Diplodocus, which was unpacked by the preparators, packed in wagons by the movers, uncovered by the excavators, verified by the paleontologist, and located by the dinosaur hunter. Here again are the preparators, now aided by the paleontologists who painstakingly put together the prehistoric skeleton over the next seven years. They use plaster to replicate any bones that are missing or broken. 
They carefully drill holes in all of the bones and attach them together using iron and wire. Now back together after 145 million years is the Diplodocus, which was made complete by the curator, uncreated by the preparators, brought to Washington DC by the movers, chiseled from the stone by the excavators, authenticated by the paleontologist, and searched for by the dinosaur hunter. Here is the night watchman making his rounds in the dark in spooky back rooms of the museum. Oops! He trips over the protruding tail of the just completed Diplodocus, which was put back together by the preparators and the paleontologists, made whole by the curator, dusted off by the preparators, hauled to the train by the movers, numbered by the excavators, validated by the paleontologist, and hunted down by the dinosaur hunter. Here are the welders who custom build an iron frame to support the fragile skeleton. They use a special welding machine to fuse the pieces of the frame together to create a stable structure. Soon to be safely supported is the 15 ton Diplodocus, which was tripped over by the night watchman, restored by the preparators and the paleontologists, made complete by the curator, shellacked by the preparators, delivered to Washington DC by the movers, unearthed by the excavators, certified by the paleontologist, and scouted out by the dinosaur hunter. Here are the museum's riggers who use cranes, hoists, and bobcats to move, position, and pose the 15 ton, 87 foot long skeleton of the Diplodocus, which was hung from the steel structure by the welders, stumbled over by the night watchman, put together by the preparators and paleontologists, made complete by the curator, assembled by the preparators, transported by the movers, excavated by the excavators, checked closely by the paleontologist, and found in crumbling sandstone by the dinosaur hunter. Here is the museum's exhibits team who paint the background murals, produce the signs, and design the lighting for the Diplodocus, which was installed by the riggers, supported by the welders, tumbled over by the night watchmen, joined by the preparators and paleontologists, made whole thanks to the curator, restored by the preparators, brought to the Smithsonian by the movers, gathered by the excavators, examined by the paleontologists, and discovered on the plain by the dinosaur hunter. Here are the cleaners who use soft brushes mild soap, silky chamois, velvety rags, and feather dusters to make spanking clean for the opening ceremony of the Diplodocus, which was displayed by the exhibits team, hoisted by the riggers, secured safely by the welders, slipped on by the night watchmen, reconstructed by the preparators and paleontologists, made whole by curator, cleaned up by the preparators, shipped to the museum by the movers, chipped from the stone by the excavators, obtained by the paleontologist, and hunted down by the dinosaur hunter. Here is the Smithsonian's director, who makes a speech and gives a toast at the ribbon cutting ceremony for the museum's newest acquisition, the Diplodocus, which was washed by the cleaners, expertly presented by the exhibits team, moved to the museum floor by the riggers, stabilized by the welders, disturbed by the night watchmen, pieced together by the preparators and paleontologists, made whole by the curator, restored by the preparators, sent from Utah by the movers, amassed by the excavators, authenticated by the paleontologist, and turned up by the eagle-eyed dinosaur hunter. So that's how the dinosaur got to the museum. The end. You can pause the video here if you want to learn a little more about dinosaurs. Thanks for reading with me. I hope you enjoyed this story.